Okay guys, uh, I wanted to uh, create another tutorial video real fast uh, about uh, pseudocode and, and the basic building blocks uh, used to uh, to create these pseudocode programs. Um, I know your reading material uh, covers it somewhat, um, but uh, it, it uses a lot of, 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 of verbiage and um, I, I really wanted to kind of condense that material down to uh, the, the 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 key commands, the key concepts that you need to know uh, with with the pseudocode, so that you can kind of just have. Uh, I'm going to post this document along with this video, uh, but so you can kind of use this document to help create your your pseudocode programs. And I believe that's one of the uh, the most important points to this class. Is I really want you guys to get really uh, comfortable and familiar with the pseudocode because uh, this is how software. Uh, is created. All, all of these pseudocode commands map directly to uh, any one of the languages that are out there. So if you're very if you're very comfortable with with these commands and and how they're put together, you're going to be really comfortable with uh, most of the programming languages that are out there. Okay, so well, I guess that's why I I threw together this document and why I want to go over it. Okay, so let's just dive in. Right, we know there's there's three types of of uh, of control structures, right? We have sequential, which which I've listed here, and and I'm going to go through all the different uh, sequential commands. We've got conditional and uh, selective control control structures, and that's basically your uh, well, that is uh, your if statement, uh, and I'm going to go over that and explain that to you. And then we also have the uh, the iterative control structures, and and there's basically only a few of these. Uh, and I'm going to show you uh, what those are. So let's let's take a let's take a quick look at uh, the the basic sequential commands uh, that can be used uh, within within pseudocode. Uh, the first one is known as this this module command, uh, and all all programming languages have this ability to uh, take a section of code and basically label it as a module or as a function. Uh, but you're basically taking a section of code and and giving it a name, and then once you give it a name, uh, and you can even use uh, parameters. We're not going to get into that with with pseudocode, um, but but later on you can take these modules and pass them parameters and and have them do uh, more complex things. But but the key thing that you guys need to to know about right now is that you can declare modules, and that anytime you declare a module, it must it needs an end tag. Okay. Uh, the pseudocode needs to denote uh, where the end of the module is because if you don't denote that and you start uh, writing another module all of a sudden you're going to have overlapping modules and you know remember that computers are are sequential right so <coughs> it's not going to be able to determine where, where one module stops and the next one begins and next thing you know the, the computer is going to crash so that's why uh, you need to be very specific with where the module starts uh, and, and there's always a main module, right? Every program has uh, the main module, and that's where uh, the program starts. So always make sure you at least have a main module, and then you need to de declare where that, that main module ends. Uh, and then you can also create whatever custom modules, uh, custom modules that you want, and give them their own unique module name. Uh, you could have, you know, uh, a test module, right? And have end test module. Um, so create as many modules as you need, but make sure that uh, you at least have the main module in every program. Okay, so that's the first kind of sequential command that's, that's very important. Uh, the second one is this this statement called declare. So every programming language has a way to uh, to tell the compiler that you want to create that you want to reserve space in memory and you want to call that space in memory a certain variable name. Okay, so for the pseudocode command, it needs to be very specific. You call declare, and then you give it, uh, you give the variable name a unique, a unique name that's not used anywhere else in the program. Uh, if you try to use the same variable name twice uh, as a as a global variable, for example, uh, the compiler is going to complain and say, "Hey, you've already used this variable name. Uh, give me a different one, right?" Because it needs to have a unique name so that uh, it has a unique place in memory. So always use unique data variable names. And also make sure that uh, the variable name can be any name you choose as long as it is one word and as long as it 
only uses uh, basically alphanumeric characters. You can use like the underscore character, um, but it has to be one word. Okay, so don't uh, don't throw a space into the variable name. Uh, don't use funky characters in the variable name. Much like the old old file names, right? Uh, only they don't have to be eight characters long. You you can you want to be as descriptive as possible with these variable names so that anybody looking uh, at the program realizes what uh, that variable is used for. The second thing that's required of this uh, declare command uh, is you need to tell it what type of, uh, of data type uh, that it is, right? So you have to use this keyword as. Uh, and these data types for right now within the pseudocode can basically be four different, uh, four different data types. Um, well, really three. Uh, your book calls it real. I call it integer. Uh, you can use either one. You can use real or integer. It means the same thing. Uh, so, so these guys here are whole numbers, right? Whole numbers or, or, or negative numbers. Uh, the float is anytime you want to use a decimal point and you want to use a partial number. Uh, you need to declare that variable, that data type, as a, as a float. Now, anytime you use uh, what's called uh, strings, basically text, if you want to display a text to the string or you want to store text off in memory, say it's, yeah, say it's the first name, say it's the last name, say it's the name of a book, you know, if it's text, you need to uh, store that in a string data type variable. Okay, so those are your three basic uh, types of variables that anytime you declare a variable, uh, it needs to be one of those uh, three types. And, and I've given you an example here of how to declare a... Um, how to declare an integer, um, right? Declare num sandwiches as integer. How to declare a string, right? As long as you use declare and use as, and you say what data type it is, uh, your pseudocode compiler is going to be uh, is going to be happy, right? If there was such a thing as a pseudocode compiler, I'm 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 your pseudocode compiler for this class, right? Um, the the next the next command that's that's very useful that, that that's part of the sequential commands is is this command called display. Uh, your book uses the word called write. Um, I've got a little problem with using the word write because that could apply to uh, disk writes also. Uh, so I like I like the keyword display instead. Um, but if you use the word write, you know, in your assignments, that's that's fine. Um, but I prefer the, I prefer the word display. Okay, so if you use the word display, you, you basically need to provide it with what, what needs to be displayed. Um, and, and you can display whatever you want. Just, just keep in mind a couple things. If you display a string, it needs to have quotations uh, around the string. You can't just say display uh, because it, without quotations, your pseudocode compiler is going to think it's a variable name or a module name. Uh, and that's that's bad. And this happens with all all the real world compilers. So if you want to display an actual string, make sure it has quotation marks. If you want to display a variable, you don't use quotation marks. For example, we're displaying uh, this this first name variable that we declared as a string and we assigned it the value Jack. Right here, we're not using quotations because it's the name of a variable. Uh, for the third example. Uh, again, we're declaring a variable called number burgers. We're assigning it the value to two, um, and you can do a couple of things. Here, you can just display the number if you want. And notice this doesn't use quotation marks, so it knows it's a variable. Or you can actually combine uh, a string, right, with the actual variable in order to uh, kind of make it make it easier for the user to understand. You know, what what's this number that's being output to the screen? If we do, if we just do this you're just gonna see the number two on the screen and the user is gonna have no idea why this two popped up. Uh, if you combine a string and then concatenate it with this and then give the name of the variable, now the user is gonna see the number of burgers is two and he's like, oh, I ordered two burgers, that makes sense. Okay, so that's the display keyword and, the, and several different ways you can use display. Uh, the next one that's important is the call module, okay? Uh, the call is, is a pseudocode command that enables you to call one of the unique modules that, that you've kind of created out of thin air. Now this module name can be any module name that, that you want to call it, um, but I'm, I want to make this very real world like in that um, it, it, it needs to be a single word, okay? Uh, just, like, uh, just like your variable names. 
So anytime you give it a module name, don't put spaces in there. Uh, you can use underscores, but make sure uh, that it's one word. I didn't list that here. Um, I, I probably will after this presentation, but just make sure that's one word. Here's an example. Um, for example, the main module is calling this display test module. Okay, so computers are sequential. It's going to hit this line, and if you, it'll come down here. And if there, if this doesn't exist, if this display test module doesn't exist, the compiler is going to crash, and it's not, uh, it's not even going to compile this program. Okay, so anytime you use this call command, you need to look through your code and make sure that that uh, that module is displayed, uh, is 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 written. Uh, into your program. If it's not, uh, it's not going to compile and it's not going to work. So I've created a display test module down here that just displays a silly string that says this test, right? And then you have to make sure that uh, you you tell the compiler where that module ends. So here's your end tag and display test module. So now any any module can call this display test module just by using the call keyword. Okay, so that's where the call this call keyword comes in handy is that any module can call any other uh, any other module that it wants and once this module is done executing it's just gonna go directly to the next line uh, right underneath that okay so that's how you can kinda hop between uh, hop between modules um, and that's that's that for the for the calling command okay the next one is uh, the input command this is this is a really uh, useful command in that this enables you to take input from the user right so where where is it actually gonna put this input well it's gonna put it into uh, whatever variable name that you've declared in the program uh, and that you you know it's it's the next parameter of the input command right so if you look at the example here um, you, you need to declare uh, you need to declare the variable that you want to input first right you gotta reserve uh, a place in memory for the computer to store this input. So make sure you declare whatever variable it is uh, that you're wanting to input. Next, you just call input and you pass it. Uh, you pass it that variable. So what that's going to do is take the keyboard input and whatever you've you've entered into the keyboard, it's going to store into this variable called uh, num burgers. And then at this point, you can do whatever you want uh, with this num burgers throughout your program. And now all of a sudden you don't have to hard code numbers into your program. You can just use this 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 uh, this data variable called num burgers uh, throughout your program and your formulas. Uh, here I'm just kind of displaying the number of burgers that uh, the user entered. Uh, so this input command is is key. Uh, next, I, you know the book mentions this command called set, uh, and to me it is absolutely a worthless command. Uh, that is not it's not used by most real world languages. Um, most real world languages you just use uh, the equal sign uh, and you call it a day. So if I say num burgers is equal to ten, assuming I declared it, you know, somewhere prior in the program, that's going to set the number of burgers equal to the number ten. The book wants you to say set number of burgers equal to ten. Which if if you guys uh, want to do that, you know, go for it. Um, but I'm I'm not going to require the word set because most most compilers uh, don't either. Uh, so since I'm running out of time here, I'm I'm going to. Uh, that's the end of part one, where I, I'm going over sequential commands. Uh, part two, I'm going to go over this uh, conditional and selection control structures.